Welcome to this afternoon's uh, Regional Connector Project Update webinar. You'll see that some of the staff are turning on their cameras. Some of them have their mics on, some of them don't. Although I have told them that if they're not presenting, no. shh. So um, with that, uh, you'll see that we are using Zoom for this meeting. Going to go through a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I see that Olga wants to test her microphone, but we heard you. Um, let's see here. Next slide. There we go. So we are recording the meeting and uh, the file will be posted on the project website as soon as we can. We'll be sending out the email to the link probably before the end of today. If you have any questions or comments, there is the QA feature for this meeting. Um, and I'll show you how to use that feature in a moment. We'll take questions until the last 15 minutes of the meeting. Usually we get a backlog of questions and that will take us to the full hour. So when you're looking at your Zoom settings, you'll see that there's the chat. There could be the chat, I'm hoping I turned it off. Um, there's the raise hand and there's a question and answer. And that is the icon that you'll click if you wanna submit a question. Again, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm going to hand it over to Olga Arroyo, who's the Community Relations Manager for this project. Great. Thank, Great. You, thank you, Jeannie. Jeannie. Oh, hold on. We, we don't have your phone. Your phone is muted. Let's see here. OK, try that again. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Okay, let me write the instructions. Star six to unmute myself. Um, well, as Jenny mentioned, thank you again for joining us. Uh, my name is Olga Arroyo and I'm the Community Relations Manager and I'll be facilitating today's presentation. Um, I am looking at different monitors and also using my telephone, so you may see me moving around uh, if you're looking at the uh, live feed video. Um, but uh, next slide, please. Uh, our goal is to make this presentation brief for you today and have prepared a very light presentation. Um, as you can see on the uh, agenda, after team introductions, we will acknowledge our Community Leadership Council and then review how the safe, Safer at Home order applies to construction projects followed by a review of what the Regional Connector project is. As the year ends, we want to review what project, what the project accomplished, um, in part due to your support, so thank you. We still have a lot of work remaining, and Gary Baker, project manager, will cover 2020 and 2021 milestones. We will close the meeting with questions and comments after Abraham's review of each shop play and public engagement activities. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I would like to introduce a team who has made this presentation possible and who you will hear from today. Uh, from the project management team, we have uh, Gary Baker, Sai Morales, Rajni Patel, JC Pensy, Mike Halsey, and Tung Bu on the line. And then from community relations, uh, we also have Jean Marie Hans, Abraham Purado, JC Montenegro, Wendy Cardona, and Ginny Verdu. And our contractor is represented by Justin Wagespach and Phil Matteo. We're all here to facilitate any questions that you may have. Um, on the project or based on this presentation. Next slide, please. And with that, I would like to introduce my colleague, Jean Marie Hans. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we wanna take a moment to recognize the ongoing contribution and the commitment of the Community Leadership Council. You see their names here. This nine-member leadership group was formed in 2014 to promote the needs and preferences of area stakeholders along the alignment in meetings just like these. 
While the contractor builds, working at the direction of Metro's management, the construction relations team, headed by Olga, who you've met, works with leadership to consider and address impacts in a manner specific to that neighborhood's daily patterns, how traffic and pedestrian circulation works, for example. Understanding the nuances of a neighborhood's daily routines and priorities provides our team the opportunity to address impacts. This may be through eye-catching community relevant directional signage and tandem to flyers efforts or use of technology like Waze, alerting drivers to alternative routes to work. The Community Leadership Council was formed as well to provide a sharing of information between Metro and communities that could present opportunities to leverage this billion dollar public transit investment towards further economic purposes. In 2014, the Second and Hope Committee working with downtown leaders advocated to Metro's board a vision for a pedestrian bridge ushering thousands of visitors and the area's workforce more directly to the cultural and educational anchors of Upper Grand. Dave Thompson, who's with us today, was one of those in support. And Olga will point us to the pedestrian bridge update in a few minutes. I point to this as an example of the importance of the partnership with the Community Leadership Council at each of the station areas and to express our sincere appreciation for the long-term commitment to dialogue with us. And today, we hope as with any of our in-person meetings of the past, we'll hear from them with questions or concerns. Olga, I'm returning this to you. Hold on, hold on, you're muted again. <laughs> Yeah. Nope, not yet. One more try. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yep. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, Jean Marie, for acknowledging our, our CLC members, um, long members of, of our team, really. Uh, now, let me uh, spend a few minutes talking about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, we all have been affected by it and are coping with it as best as we can. And as part of the state, county, and applicable city orders uh, specific to COVID-19 response, metro construction activities are currently included as essential activities. And so construction activities are continuing as permitted by the local jurisdiction. And so as you, as we all stay home uh, based on the orders, you will notice that uh, if you look at your window, if you're along the alignment, is that you'll see crews working on, on the project. And this is the reason why uh, we are considered essential workers. And so uh, we will continue to progress this project as, as much as we can, given the limitations that COVID represents. Uh, Metro is in close communication with health of healthcare officials about COVID-19. Um, you can get updates on the latest service adjustments and what we are doing to find the curve at metro.net. Uh, that website is updated regularly with new information. Next slide, please. And now I'm, I'm gonna spend a few minutes reviewing what the project is for those who may be joining us for the first time. So the regional connector is a 1.9 mile underground light rail alignment. Uh, we are building three new underground stations. Uh, one of them is a replacement station in Little Tokyo Arts District. And the two new stations are Historic Broadway at 2nd and Broadway and Grand Avenue Arts slash Bunker Hill at 2nd and Hope. The system anticipates to have 90,000 daily riders uh, when it's open and we're slated to open for passenger service in 2022. Next slide, please. Here's a map of the project alignment. Uh, the white circles represent the new stations. And this is actually the existing station, my apologies. The new station will be built right across the street. 
And our alignment goes from Little Tokyo through downtown LA under 2nd Street, and then starts turning uh, southbound at Bunker Hill on Flower, connecting at 7th and Metro. Next slide, please. So as you saw in the previous map, we saw the uh, red and purple lines. Those are represented here as well. In October, the Metro Board of Directors approved the operational plan for regional connector, uh, which will allow for regional connector to integrate into the Blue Expo and Gold Line as communicated throughout the life of this project. Uh, and the board has also affirmed that we will have a one seat ride uh, between Azusa and Long Beach, represented in the blue uh, highlight on this map, and uh, one seat ride between East LA and Santa Monica, represented in the yellow highlight on this image. Next slide, please. And with that, I would like to introduce uh, Gary Baker, the project manager who will review with us the uh, 2020 accomplishments and walk us through what we should expect in 2021 as well. Thank you, Olga. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for your interest in uh, time and joining us this afternoon. Uh, 2020 has been an incredible year, hasn't it? And I, I'm sure um, we all are agree that uh, we can't wait for it to finish. Um, our uh, initial thoughts obviously are with uh, families who've uh, been affected by COVID and obviously the small businesses, especially along our alignment that have been impacted as well. So we join you in um, looking forward to a return to, to a normalcy of some type. <clears throat> so while the uh, project has been advancing, uh, COVID's impacted us too. And um, you know, a lot of a lot of times we view the, the light traffic in the street as being a benefit to us, but overall it's been um, uh, a negative for the project as well as it's impacted some of our production rates. However, the project uh, is persevering and uh, there's been a tremendous amount of uh, work that's been done this past year. And of course we appreciate the community's uh, support of that construction. You know, from a public's perception, it's not always apparent how much work is being done because uh, all you get to do is stare at the uh, green construction fences month after month. But we have made good strides this, this past year. And uh, we're looking forward to our final year of construction uh, uh, next year. So in 2020, um, essentially kind of the big picture, we've um, topped out um, all three of our stations. By that means the structural concrete is largely uh, finishing on uh, the major uh, uh, station structures. Flower Street, the uh, cut and cover box is completed and we've begun backfilling underneath uh, Flower Street and also at Broadway Street. And so there's a lot of work that's continuing uh, under, the, under the road decks that's not immediately apparent to the public. And of course, um, here in Little Tokyo, Alameda Street and um, First Street's been uh, restored. So a lot of work has been done. Um, essentially, though, these stations, stations are big multi-structure, multi-storied structures that are uh, under the ground. So it's um, um, complex work, but it's not always apparent how much work there is to do there. And uh, we applaud our contractor for uh, his efforts, in spite of COVID, of advancing this work. So uh, what's being done now is essentially a focus on our mechanical systems. And uh, by that, I mean... Uh, rail, uh, installing rail, installing uh, power communication, ventilation systems, safety systems. And so in 2021, we'll be completing those systems. And a year from now, uh, you can expect uh, us to be in final testing and prep for uh, train testing um, 2022. So um, thank you for your patience. It is paying off. The uh, light is truly at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And um, we are very encouraged that uh, this project, you know, people don't uh, sometimes appreciate uh, how long a, a big project like this takes, but it's glad, we're glad to be approaching um, uh, the final, uh, final year of major construction work. So um, our team will lead us, or lead you through uh, the work that's um, upcoming and answer any questions you have. Uh, but I want to thank you for long and steady support of the project. Um, it's only possible 
uh, with the thousands, with the hundreds of workers on the project and the community support, um, and and um, I'll, I'll leave you. I guess I'm having some uh, technical issues with the mic. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'll just close in by saying that uh, in spite of the pandemic um, and all its impacts, I know we all have a lot to be thankful for, and so I wanted to wish you and your families on behalf of the project a very happy holiday season. So. I apologize if there's uh, technical issues. Um, I'll hand it back to uh, Olga or the um, facilitator, if that's okay. We do have a question from the audience. And yeah, we, we're aware of the, the mic issues. Um, Ivan has a question about how long will the testing take? Okay, yeah. we. Uh, the testing overall will take uh, there's there's a uh, there's two steps of the testing. One is done by the contractor, and then one is done by Metro Operations. And so uh, the contractor's testing um, is done over about a three to four month period of time towards the end of the project, kind of concurrent with the wrapping up of many of the construction tasks. Uh, and then once we finish construction, we hand it over to Metro Operations, and there they do a months of testing as well as um, about four months of operator training. Metro has over 400, 450 operators to train and be certified on this system, as well as all the support staff. And uh, that's an enormous effort. Uh, and they have a very aggressive schedule to finish it uh, in that short time period. Um, you know, I, I work with this uh, microphone every day and I apologize for uh, some unforeseen issue this morning. <clears throat> It's okay, I'll just go ahead and, and and summarize the response, which is that the contractor's testing will take about three to four months. Then once the contractor hands over the project to uh, Metro, it will take another four months of operator training. Okay, if nothing else, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you. Great, thank you, Gary, for that um, update. And as Gary explained, there has been a lot of progress being done. And we'll just walk through some of these slides uh, to see what the progress has been. Uh, here on the uh, historic Broadway station in Little Tokyo, we can see how we've moved away from uh, forming the stations with rebar and placing concrete to actually building uh, the roof of the structures. On the image on the right, you can see some of the suspended utilities from the deck. And uh, currently at 2nd and Broadway, we're in the process of placing all these utilities in their permanent condition as part of the deck removal phase. Uh, and so for, for the uh, Station structure completion, we have uh, done that successfully at first in Alameda where the decking was completed and we're very close to uh, finishing those steps here at 2nd and Broadway. Next slide, please. Uh, similar progress in the Bunker Hill area where the structure there has been completed as well, as you can see on the left. Uh, we're getting ready for, for backfill now that the underground station is fully formed and some of the structure is now coming um, above level and you'll start seeing those changes as the year progresses. Next slide. The Alameda Tunnel Box construction is also well underway. Uh, this is what is going to allow us to connect the regional connector to the goal line. And as you can see from these images, uh, we have a floor, we have walls, and pretty soon we will have a roof over that to make it an underground system. Next slide. For the Flower Street Tunnel Box, uh, a lot of progress has been accomplished here as well, uh, where the tunnel box is fully formed along that corridor. We do have some sections that still uh, require the formation of the roof, but for the most part, uh, that tunnel box is fully formed. 
uh, emergency exit walkways are in place, as you can see from the image on the right. Um, and in 2021, we'll start advancing some of the work at grade level. Next slide. In our tunnels, uh, we've made a lot of progress there as well. In these images, you can see how the track work is now in place. The installation is almost completed. Um, on the image on the left, we have uh, some special track that had to be installed in segment sensitive sites sensitive areas of our segment. Um, and on the right, you see the, the traditional track system in place. Next slide. This is the uh, deck removal uh, that was accomplished this year in Little Tokyo. Uh, the first in Alameda intersection as well as Central Avenue uh, were closed for extended period of time throughout uh, 2020, where we were successfully able to remove the deck panels, that was the temporary roadway, place utilities in their final configuration, and then be able to reopen the street back uh, to motorists and pedestrians. And so after this phase, we only have a few civil improvements, finishing sidewalk, uh, curb and gutter, street lighting, street signals, and the final paving that will allow for the final striping and configuration of the street. Next slide. Uh, here's another milestone accomplished this year. We set up the closure at 2nd and Broadway to allow us to remove those deck panels. And so you could see the open uh, station. Some, of, some portions of it are open while others are closed. And then everything closest to the bottom of the graphic is a uh, temporary deck panel that will be removed. Next slide, please. And then finally, uh, the implementation of the Alameda tunnel box construction. This is all along Alameda between First and Temple Street. Uh, what you see in the image is the demolition of the Little Tokyo Arts district station. All of that has been removed. I know it's kind of hard to see if you're walking by or driving through the corridor because of the chain link fence uh, on top of that K-rail. Um, but behind that barrier, this is what has transpired. So we're excited to have uh, reached this milestone as it's going to allow us to progress the excavation and build that tunnel box to connect to the gold line. Next slide, please. And then here's just some uh, information on the alternative service. While the gold line is out of service, we do have a bus shuttle and uh, alternative services that travel through the area. Uh, we have lane reductions on Alameda. And at the beginning of the year, we will have a uh, six month closure of Temple Street. Uh, this will allow us also again to advance that tunnel box construction along Alameda. Next slide. Next slide, please. So now as we get into 2021, uh, we will see uh, street restoration progressing uh, westbound. As mentioned earlier, we completed the street restoration or deck removal in um, Little Tokyo, first in Alameda, Central Avenue. We're doing the same process now at Second and Broadway. And so in 2021, we will be doing that at the Bunker Hill Grand Avenue Art Station, as well as on Flower Street. Next slide, please. In 2021, you will also start seeing uh, some of the station plazas being formed and taking shape, as well as the amenities to serve those stations. You will see um, the structure of the ad grade station entrance being formed and by the end of the 2021 calendar year, we hope to have a uh, structure similar to what's in the graphic. Next slide, please. Here's another view of the uh, Little Tokyo Arts District Station uh, from the pedestrian view. Next slide, please.
And so the next couple of slides, we just wanted to show you what those um, at grade station entrances are going to look like. So here's uh, Second and Broadway, uh, Historic Broadway Station, and it's Plaza entrance. Next slide. And this is uh, inside the station. The next slide. And this is what the uh, Grand Avenue Arts Bunker Hill Station will look like, where we do have a pedestrian bridge connecting the station to uh, the back portion of the Broad Museum, making access to Upper Grand a lot more convenient. Next slide. And so in 2021, uh, our goal, our contractor's goal, is to start construction of this pedestrian bridge. Um, some efforts began a few months ago uh, with the installation of some of the piles to support those abutments. And so in 2021, early 2021, you will see a lot more activity on Hope Street as our contractor starts getting ready for the fault work and create the shape of this pedestrian bridge. Next slide. Work in the tunnels will continue uh, as we get ready to integrate our system into uh, the blue and the expo lines. And so in the same way as we had a service interruption of the goal line to tie those two lines together, we will go through a similar exercise late 2021 at 7 Metro to bring those two systems together. Next slide. And so here in summary, you see all the major activities that still remain before we get to 2022 when trains are running. So the construction at the station and tunnel box will continue uh, through 2021 and conclude in 2022 at all locations. Uh, street restoration and associated closures for deck removal will continue throughout the alignment into 2021. And that deck removal would be followed by civil restoration improvements, such as tree replacement, lighting, sidewalks, final paving and striping. And that'll be 2021 through 2022 throughout the alignment. The service interruption of the goal line to facilitate the construction of the tunnel box along Alameda also concludes in 2022. And that will allow us to go into testing mode, which is what uh, Gary talked about earlier in his presentation. Uh, there is uh, one more slide. I don't, I don't see it on, on my screen, but the bottom line covers the uh, operation of the system also in 2022. Next slide, please. With that, I would like to introduce Abraham Jurado, who will walk us through the business mitigation program, each shot play, and we'll also review uh, some of the efforts to place of public engagement and public outreach. Um, Olga, before we jump into each shot play, there's a question on the floor. Do you, do you mind if I go ahead and ask it? Sure, go ahead. Sure. Joel's asking, with regard to our Grand Avenue Bunker Hill Station, will there be pedestrian access directly from Hope and Flower Street in addition to the Grand Avenue pedestrian bridge access? Uh, there will be access, pedestrian access from Hope and Flower, um, but it won't be, if it's to the station, yes, you'll be able to walk from the street level uh, into the station. So you will pay your fee and then have access into the station. Um, if you are looking to get to Upper Grand, for example, without using the pedestrian bridge or the station, uh, there are existing uh, stairways and elevators on the side of the road that will remain open through the construction of the pedestrian bridge. So those will allow you to get access to Upper Grand. And one more question. Eskar is asking, how deep are the tunnels below the surface at each station? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know how deep the tunnels are. I know the stations are between 80 uh, to 100 feet deep, depending on where we are. And so my assumption is that the, the tunnels are at the same depth. 
Um, but I, I will confirm with the team here joining us in, in the meeting to try to get a better estimate of that. Sounds good, thank you. All right, Abraham, floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, well, this year, eShop Play has been an important tool for the project to help support businesses near our construction. Uh, next slide. So since January, we've actually highlighted our eShop Play partner businesses in over 60 social media posts to our over 11,000 followers on Facebook, Twitter, and Nextdoor. Um, Uh-oh. Looks like me. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, in addition to this, we've also done another 60 plus uh, business highlights to our over 3,000 email subscribers. Now, each business highlight ensures our followers are open during construction, and we will continue doing this through the last few weeks of the year and throughout 2021. Uh, one of the most valuable ways we do this is by collaborating with the community organizations near our project. Uh, so be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter or subscribe to our newsletter to learn more about uh, our Eat Shop Play partners and all the great food, online fun, or great gifts you can enjoy this holiday season and throughout 2021. In fact, we actually do have a uh, Eat Shop Play winter newsletter coming out this week, so make sure you visit our website and sign up. Uh, next slide. Uh, now, everything we've accomplished in 2020 has been done with communication to our stakeholders. So that's the businesses, the residents, visitors, and everyone else near our project. Uh, in 2020 alone, we've put out over 150 construction update newsletters, held over uh, 200 project update briefings with stakeholders, posted over 250 social media updates on the progress of construction. Uh, we've held these monthly webinars, just like this one, uh, continue to put out our weekly weekend look ahead newsletter, and have even had four paid advertising campaigns to make sure everyone is made aware of the work we're doing on this project. Next slide. Now our team creates these construction notices. Um, we set up these stakeholder briefings, distribute information door to door, in addition to these email and social media updates. Uh, we, we even work closely with map services like Waze to keep everyone informed on how to navigate through our project area. Uh, and of course, all this information is available on our project website as well. Next slide. And my colleagues and I will continue to provide this information to our stakeholders. And you can always join us for our next webinar updates, uh, including the ones we're holding uh, in January, February, and March, and of course, throughout the rest of the year. Um, or if you have any questions and would like to reach us directly, our live in language 24 seven project hotline is always available at 213. 922-7277. Um, with that, do we have any more questions about each shot play, the project, anything? We have, some, we have some for the project, not for each shot play. So um, I can launch into those. Great. Awesome. So Vaughn has a question. Um, will the multi-story tower that will be built above the Broadway station have access to the station from within the tower? I think Olga, Olga, I do see that there's some technical staff on the call as well, so. Oops, but if you're answering the question, you're currently muted. There you go, ready? Hi, I was having some problems and I uh, couldn't hear the end of the presentation. Oh, well, Abraham did an outstanding job. Um, so Vaughn has a question from the floor, which is, will the multi-story tower that will be built above the Broadway station have access to the station from within the tower? Oh, great question. Uh, unfortunately, it won't. Uh, the, the build above the Broadway station, uh, users of that building will have to come out to the street and enter from the uh, ad grade or street level entrance. And then we've got the next question from Tom asking, will the street restoration on Flower Street take place on the weekends? Uh, yes, that's the plan. Um, we installed the deck over a series of weekend closures. And so the goal is to remove them uh, using a similar process. So we would have closure start on a Friday night and stay in place over the weekend and then pick them up 
Monday morning in time for rush hour traffic. All right, great. And then we've got another one, which is from Xavier. Is the tower going to be built before the project opens in 2022? I think mm, that's in question. reference to the second and Broadway. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not following the timeline of the building uh, construction. Uh, my understanding is that it's not, is that uh, we will open the system first and then they will open or construct their building after. Um, and I do know that they are advancing their plans and may have already gone through the environmental review process. But these are all great questions. And so uh, we will try to have better updates for you at the beginning of the year, which is when we're planning to meet again. Uh, we will continue our meetings virtually. Um, one more question is likely a follow-up. Um, and the, uh, the station will be open. Will the station remain open while the tower construction is underway? That would be the plan. I, I don't know what the sequence of work will be for that contractor. Um, we haven't seen a construction schedule uh, other than knowing that they want to pursue that build out and are trying to get their building environmentally clear through the CEQA process. Um, but as far as the details and the coordination, that has not started yet. All right, and from Dave Thompson, a question for the project. Will the general contractor consider adjusting the K-Rail and the fence on Flower and Third to improve safety and security for the Bank of America Plaza? Hi, Dave, great question. Yes, um, uh, you may have heard from Ibrahim this week or in the next few days, um, but our contractor will be removing some of those sound barriers and replacing them with chain link fence uh, to allow for more visibility of the Bank of America entrance at Third and Flower. And so um, hopefully those, those changes happen sooner rather than later. Um, Olga, I can actually uh, say that uh, that's going to be scheduled uh, in the next week or so. Um, most likely on a Saturday. So Dave, uh, uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch so I can let you know. <laughs> All right, we don't have any questions right now, but it could be that the panelists, I'm sorry, that the folks in the audience, as a reminder, you can use that Q&A feature within Zoom to ask your questions. I'm also keeping an eye on chat. But right now we don't have any questions. Olga, one of the questions that I answered earlier, um, just through chat, was um, someone had asked if we could go through the station and the alignment one more time. So do, would you mind walking us through that one more time? No, not at all. OK, cool. I pulled the slide up for you. Great. Uh, so the areas in, in blue and, and gold, the dashed lines, uh, that represents the regional connector alignment all within downtown LA. And so the project is connecting uh, to the gold line at the uh, Little Tokyo Arts District Station. And then our second connection point is at 7th and Metro where we tie into the blue and the expo line. Um, the entire system is, is underground, um, and so we'll connect to the gold line on the east end and to Blue and Expo on the west end. Uh, we are building uh, the three new stations. Uh, again, the Little Tokyo Arts District Station is a replacement station. Uh, based on, on the previous photo shared during the presentation, we could see that the existing station has been completely demolished now making way for that transition from regional connector into the gold line. And then as we continue westbound on 2nd Street, we have our second station uh, right across the street from the uh, LA Times building where the overbuild will take place. 
Um, so that's at 2nd Street between Broadway and Spring. The third station is in Bunker Hill at 2nd and Hope. Uh, from there, our system goes again underground on Flower Street to connect to 7th and Metro. Um, the system does stay below the blue, I'm sorry, not the blue, the red and purple lines. You see that we cross them here in the center of the graphic. Um, and it's actually below the uh, red and purple line tunnel. And so when completed, um, you will be able to go from Azusa, for example, on the goal line, come through downtown LA using the regional connector, and then uh, finish your trip in Long Beach. Uh, similarly, if you're coming from East LA, for example, um, and your final destination is Santa Monica, you can stay on that same train, come in from the east side, go through downtown LA, and finish your trip and arrive in Santa Monica. If you're looking to um, reach Santa Monica, but are coming from Azusa instead of East LA, you will have to transfer just in the same way that we currently transfer between the purple and the red line. Uh, you will get off at one of the three stations, uh, Little Tokyo, Arts District, um, Bunker Hill, or Historic Broadway and then look for the, the head sign on the we can switch trains and reach your destination. Thank you. And we do have another question, which is um, Vaughn's wanting to know, when will the new line designation names go into effect? Well, we're using them now, um, the new line designation, sorry, yeah, names. Okay, I, thought I, may, I may have read that wrong. Uh, we're using the um, the final names. These are all board approved, uh, and so we're using it in our communication now. Uh, when the system opens, those names will be transferred into signage at the station. Um, and so all these processes are ongoing now internally to get ready for opening, reflecting those names throughout the system. Excellent. Well, we don't have any questions right now, um, and we, we've we've come to the end of the presentation. If there's um, is there anything else that the team wanted to to review prior to ending today's meeting? Say that one more time, Jenny. Oh, we've answered all of the questions. I just wanted to check to see if there was anything else that uh, we needed to review before we ended today's meeting. I would just encourage everyone to uh, stay in touch with us. Uh, we do have a lot of work in 2021 and a lot of it will start at the beginning of the year. Uh, we cover some of those activities in our November meeting. Um, and we didn't want to review that again in this meeting just to kind of keep it light uh, for the month of December. Uh, and so we just wanted to present you with uh, a bigger picture of what was accomplished and what is to come. Um, but please keep in touch with us. Uh, we'll be reaching out to you if you're a uh, stakeholder adjacent to our construction to make sure that you have all in and uh, can uh, help us be successful with the new phases of construction come 2021. Thanks, we do have one more question. So um, this is in Little Tokyo, what street closures are anticipated in the new future in Little Tokyo on First Street, both east and westbound between Alameda and Vignes? In the near, near future, I would say the, the major closure that we're gonna see in 2021 is on Temple Street east of Alameda when we're going to close a small section of Temple Street to allow for the construction of the tunnel box to get started. Uh, we do have an image of that here in the presentation that maybe we can go back to, Ginny. Um, but that closure will be in place for about six months. Once that work is completed, uh, here we are. Um, but here we see in red, uh, along Alameda, it reflects a lane reduction of traffic on the northbound direction. Uh, but if you look at the center of that graphic, we can see um, 
if that tempo is closed. Uh, we are looking to start that closure as early as January 29th, about six months. And so a detour would be in place using some of the back streets um, east of Alameda. Uh, we're doing uh, coordination with all of those stakeholders on Temple Street. We want to make sure that they know how to access their property when Temple Street is closed. Uh, we've specifically taken a lot of time to coordinate with the emergency responders. We recognize that they have several hubs on Temple Street. And so they have been um, briefed and understand what the closure is, and they are prepared to um, accommodate our closure and still be able to respond to um, 911 calls or other services as needed. The follow-up to that is what about lane reductions or closures on First Street in the near future between Alameda and Vignes? Uh, we have ongoing lane reductions on First Street now between Alameda and Vignes. Uh, DWP is out there doing some work and they're actually implementing directional closures. Uh, this week we're concluding the westbound directional closure and then next week we start the eastbound direction of closure. And then um, at the same time on Saturdays only, we're looking to start the installation of piles at Temple Street, preparing us for that six month closure that I just mentioned. Uh, so a direction of traffic on Temple will be closed um, on Saturdays only. Um, Joanne, hi Joanne. Joanne has a question. Um, will the mangrove parking lot be open to the public during the Temple Street closure? Hi Joanne, yes. Uh, all the properties along Temple will have access. Uh, our office is right adjacent to that parking lot and it will be closest to the Temple Street closure. Uh, but yes, all the, all the properties will have access to their, to their driveways including the parking lot. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the last call for questions. Um, there's been a lot of them. Uh, also, Dave uh, wanted to pass along a thank you to the team for the great communication and congratulate everyone on the impressive progress of the project. So. Great job, you guys. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate that. You know, you're one of our neighbors uh, for one of our stations, and we couldn't have done all the work that we have done in the past uh, few years without your support. So uh, thank you. We appreciate that as well. OK. Well, I'm going to put up that last slide again, um, just so that folks know that we will have another meeting in January, January 14th in 2021. It will be a whole new year. Um, and we'll go ahead and get the recording and the PowerPoint deck out to those who attended the meeting today, along with the whole distribution list. The important thing to know for today that's a little different is that you'll receive a quick survey on how today's presentation went and your feedback would be greatly appreciated and highly valued. With that, Olga, I don't know if you're ready to close it out. Yes, and I just want to encourage uh, everyone to give us your feedback. Uh, we are uh, modifying the way we communicate uh, with you and others because of the pandemic. And so we have transitioned into virtual meetings. And so it'll be good for us to understand if the way that we are presenting virtually is informative to you. Um, maybe we're using uh, too much text or maybe not enough pictures. You know, what are the things that are important for you uh, to be able to uh, 